Thank you for joining us for another power-packed message from Dr. Miles Monroe, provided by Monroe Global Incorporated and MonroeGlobal.com. We transform followers into leaders and leaders into agents of change. We hope that this message is a blessing to you as you advance your life and discover your purpose. Now, let's go into the message. Uh, right on top of your page, this topic, understanding the principle of fatherhood. Can you go ahead and write that down, please? And I want to deal with the subject of fatherhood, appreciating why men are called fathers. Why God called men fathers. The kingdom of God is the focus of Jesus. So let me begin with a, a scripture that's found in the book of Genesis chapter 1. Can you turn there please? If you don't have a Bible, just look at the screen. So we are going to take a look at this scripture. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 says, Then God said, Let us make man in our own image and our likeness, and let them have what? Dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, over the cattle of the field and over all the earth and over everything that creeps upon the ground so God is very clear about why he made man now write this down the Bible is about a king a kingdom and his royal kids the Bible is not about a religion the Bible is about a royal family the Bible is about a kingdom because a kingdom is a governing influence of a king over a territory. In other words, all kingdoms are, are countries with citizens. They are not religions with members. And I want to begin with this concept because to understand how manhood works, the word dominion, you want to write it down. I did some research for you, and the word dominion is from two Hebrew words. The word is dawah, and it means sovereign rule or kingdom. The word is also the root word mamlakat, which also means royal power or kingdom. So when you read the Bible, Genesis 1.26, it actually should be read like this. And God said, let us make man in our own image and our likeness and let them have kingdom over the earth. Let them have royal power. The word dominion means to govern, to rule, to control, to manage, to lead, to master something. In other words, God created humans to have dominion power, kingdom power over the earth. Therefore, the first thing God gave man was a kingdom over the earth. I was born in 1954 in the Bahamas. When I was born, the Bahamas was not a country. The Bahamas was called a colony. A colony is a territory that belongs to a kingdom that is under the control of a king. So when I was born in 1954 in the island of Nassau, New Providence, I was born under a king and a queen. And every morning at 9 a.m., we had to wake up as students and we had to sing every morning a worship song to the queen and king of England. We never saw them. We just kept singing. Because in a kingdom, the first thing you do every morning is you worship the sovereign. Some of you all are slow. See, being born in America is a disadvantage because there's no kingdom concept in America, but Jesus Christ is a king. He's not a president. And in a kingdom, you are required to worship. And so at four years old, three years old, we would stand up in the hot sun, 90 degrees, and we had to sing because we were in a kingdom. Before we started work in school, we had to sing to the king. What is a kingdom? It's a very important definition. A kingdom is the governing influence of a king over a territory, impacting it with his will, his purpose, and his intent, producing a citizenry with a lifestyle reflecting the culture, values, morals, and nature of the king. This is a very important definition. A kingdom is a governing influence of a king over a territory. 
Notice the word his territory is there. Because in a kingdom, the king owns the country as personal property. That's why the Bible says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. As a matter of fact, the reason why a king is called Lord is because the word owner is the word Adonai, Adon, which means master owner. So every king is automatically your Lord because he owns the country. You don't make a king Lord. He comes as Lord. He owns the country. And so Jesus Christ is Lord because the earth is the Lord's. The only Lord in America that exists is the one you're renting from. It's called the land Lord because he is the owner of the property. So a kingdom is a government that owns a territory that impacts the territory with the king's personal will and purpose and intent and he produces a citizenry of people who reflect his nature, his values, his morals, and his lifestyle. So when you come to the Bahamas, for example, we were a colony under the kingdom of Great Britain for over 250 years. So in the Bahamas, we speak English just like our king speaks English. We drive on the left-hand side of the street like our kingdom does. We wear suits with short pants and long socks. We drink tea, not coffee. Why? Because when you are under a kingdom, you take on the lifestyle, the morals, the standards of your kingdom, even though you are in a colony. It's amazing that we act just like the kingdom of Great Britain for years and the king never came to our territory. In other words, Christ doesn't need to come here for you to act like there. Therefore, all kingdoms colonize. Say that with me. All kingdoms colonize. Write that down, quick. All kingdoms colonize. Republics don't colonize. Democracies don't colonize. Only kingdoms colonize. And the Bible is about colonization. As a matter of fact, God's original purpose and plan was to colonize earth with heaven, just like the British colonized the islands of the Bahamas. Put it another way, God's plan was for man to compose the colony of heaven on earth. He wanted to extend his heavenly kingdom to the physical earth so that earth could reflect what heaven looks like. <laughs> Therefore, the plan of God and his goal was not to take man to heaven, but to establish a heavenly society on earth. I'm talking to men now. You are not supposed to be a man of God after you get to heaven. Don't rush me now. I'm getting, I'm getting excited. I'm going to run down there in a minute. Write this down, please. All societies create a culture that expresses the values and morals and standards of the people of that culture. Kingdoms colonize, colonies have a culture, and the culture produces society, and the society reflects the values, the morals, the standards, and the nature of the country. Therefore, the plan of God was for humanity to look just like heaven without coming to heaven. You know, let me give you this quick. Listen carefully about kingdoms. When a kingdom takes over a territory, look at me, very important. When they colonize it, the first thing they destroy in the people is their language. When they took over our islands, the British kingdom took away our African language. It became illegal to speak the African dialect, and they made us speak the kingdom's language. Jolly well, old chap, come on, fellow. <laughs> and from a child, we had to speak British English. They took away our language. Well, that's the first thing a kingdom does when they take over territory. They colonize you by taking away your language. That's why Jesus said, when the Holy Spirit comes, the first thing he will take away is your language and give you heaven's language. Oh, I don't want to get into that. 
Why? Because your language always gives you away. Alabaray el Señor. Gloria a Dios. You could tell where a man is from just when he speaks. That's supposed to give you away. You are not from earth. You are in the earth, but you are not from the earth. Come on, somebody talk to me. Tongues is a sign that you are from another place. I am in the world, but not. Tongues is not a religious ritual. It's a national language. Oh, come on, shout with me. You take on the values of your country. Listen carefully, please. Therefore, the fall of man was not a fall from heaven. Adam did not fall from heaven. So going to heaven is not restoration. I'm going to say this slow. This gets a little bit of... Okay. The fall of man is not a fall from heaven, but a fall from dominion. You cannot lose what you never received. God never gave Adam heaven. So Adam couldn't lose heaven. He never got it. God gave Adam earth. Dominion over earth. So the fall of man was the loss of a kingdom. Stay with me. <laughs> the fall of man was the loss of what? A kingdom. Dawao. Mamlakak. You couldn't lose what you never got. God said in Genesis 26, Adam, here is Mamlakak over the earth. Here is Dawa over the earth. How dominion of the earth. Kingdom. And Adam lost it. Let me prove it. You can always tell what Adam lost by what Jesus bought. Whatever man lost is what Jesus Christ had to bring back to earth. <laughs> Going to heaven does not fulfill God's will. Dominating earth fulfills God's will for you. Oh, I'm talking to myself. Religion prepares men to leave earth. The kingdom equips men to rule earth. The kingdom focuses on occupation. Religion focuses on evacuation. Some of y'all still ain't getting with me here. That's why the church religious church is so rapture oriented because it has no anointing for kingdom impact we are not here to focus on going to heaven we are here to invade your city your business world your law world your media world your education world your political world god says go into all the world so whatever man lost Jesus had to bring back to earth. Let's read what Jesus bought. His first public statement is found in Matthew 4 verse 17. Here's what he says. He just finished being tested. He passed his test. His first public statement says, Matthew 4 17, from that time forward, Jesus began to preach, quote, repent, why? For the kingdom of heaven has returned. Kingdom, Dawao. Mamlakak. Oh, I look at Luke chapter 4, verse 43. He says, I must preach the good news of the kingdom of God to other towns also because that is why I was sent. The cross was not the goal of his coming, it was a means to an end. He said, The reason why, I can look at it, he said, Because. Of the kingdom message that's why I was sent and then he tells us in Luke chapter 9 verse 2 he sent them out to preach the kingdom of God is here and then heal the sick you know miracles and there are gonna be some here in a few moments miracles are not religious activity let me explain miracles to you 
When you come to the Bahamas, because we were under a kingdom and we were a colony, when you come to the Bahamas, when you walk out of the airport, you will notice that when you get into the taxi cab, the guy will take the car and take it on the left-hand side of the street. And he'll drive you all day on the left. Why? Because that act of driving is evidence that another government was here. Oh, you don't get it. <laughs> so, when you read the Bible, it never says, and Jesus healed the sick, and cleansed the leper, and raised the dead, and then preached the kingdom. It never says that. Read your Bible again. It always says, he preached the kingdom of God first. Then it says, then he healed the sick. In other words, he had to give evidence that another country had arrived. Uh oh. In other words, sickness being cured is evidence that another country is now invading the earth again, taking back territory. Lift your hands right now. Every sickness in your family has to leave tonight because you are under the kingdom teaching. And I rebuke it in Jesus' name. Let the kingdom come to your house in Jesus' name. I remember a man who had a son, and the son had a demon, and the demon was throwing the little boy up and down and destroying him, and they brought him to Jesus to be healed, and Jesus cast the demon out. And the man said, you did this because of the devil. Who said that? The religious people. They said, you are full of the devil. She said, no, no, no. How can you be so stupid, he says. He said, first of all, when kingdoms take territory, they never give it up. By the way, I was born in one. I know what that means. That's the principle. A kingdom's power is in its territory. I'm going to repeat this. Write this down, please. A kingdom's power is in what? It's territory. That's why kingdoms like to expand. The more land a kingdom has, the greater power it has. So when kingdoms take territory, they never give it up without a fight. So Christ says, Satan will never cast himself out of his own territory. It was a kingdom statement. He said, but if I cast out this demon by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of heaven has come upon you. Who come on, give a praise. He said, this is evidence that another country has arrived. I'm taking back territory. God's about to take back the business you lost. He's about to take back the marriage you lost. He's about to take back even the child that was killed. He's going to give you a new baby. What is the ultimate desire of Jesus? I found it. Matthew 6 verse 9, they asked Jesus, what should we pray for? He said, when you pray, pray this, our Father who is not on earth. Where is he? In the home country. Holy is his name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Where? On earth. How? Just like it is in heaven. He said, don't pray to leave. Pray for heaven to come to earth. I'm going to try that again. Religion say pray to go to heaven. The kingdom says pray for heaven to come to earth. Now clap your hands and believe what Jesus said. It's reversed. We've been trained to leave. He's trying to train us to invade. Hallelujah. And so he has this plan. He has his plan. He created the human family to manifest his kingdom culture, his morals, his values on the earth. That's why God made the human family. It's supposed to be a society of heaven on earth. That means the, the male and the female are supposed to reflect what heaven's nature is like. Hey boys, say culture. The foundation of the human family is a male. 
Today, there are 6.7 billion people on earth. And God only made one of them from the soil. He never went back. Let me say it slow because it's a little bit deep. There are 6.7 billion people on earth right now. Billion. And God only created one from the soil. He never went back. Females did not come from the soil. And the first and only human that God created from the soil was a male. Why? Because he was laying the foundation for the human family. When you're going to build anything, you got to first lay the foundation. Stay with me now. And the most important part of any building is the foundation. And you only lay one. Oh, I feel like running now. Foundation. No home in this city has two foundations. Woo. The male is God's chosen foundation for the human family and he puts us on the bottom see you've been taught you are the head no you are the bottom of the home now it's gonna get heavy now you've been taught in your culture that you are the head of the house uh -uh -uh -uh. tonight i'm taking you back to kingdom teaching you are on the bottom of the house you're supposed to carry the weight of the whole family Come on, clap your hands, you real man. Listen to me. You've been around this beautiful hotel for all the last few days. I saw you through my window taking photographs of the building, of the chandelier, of the beautiful plants. You take pictures of the walls. And guess what? You never took a photograph of the foundation. Why? Because you cannot see it. Why? It's on the bottom, but it's holding up everything. That means a real man doesn't walk around bragging about what he does for his family. He just does it, doesn't care if nobody takes a photograph. He just holds up his wife, his children, pays the bills, he keeps them solid, he keeps them together. Oh, I'm getting ready to get excited. A real man doesn't brag about paying the rent. He doesn't brag about buying groceries. He doesn't brag about keeping the lights on. Why? That's his responsibility. Clap your hands and say, I'm a real man. The most important part of this hotel is the foundation. And you never looked at it. Oh, they don't recognize me. They don't know what. Shut up and just hold it up. It's your family. Hold the family up. Tell your neighbor, stay on the bottom. And hold the family up. Tell your neighbor, God knows where you are. Tell your neighbor, God laid you down there. Because he know you can carry the weight. Clap your hands, all you strong men who are foundation people. Write this down quickly. The foundation carries the weight of the building, Bishop. Can I suggest to you that the key to the building is the foundation? Some of you in this room are builders, contractors, and you know that in your city, the local government has a building code. And the building code says, that if you break the walls down of a building, the government will not condemn the building. If you lose the windows, they won't condemn the building. If you lose the roof, they won't condemn the building. If you destroy the fancy chandeliers, they won't condemn the building. If you dig up all the carpet, they won't condemn the building. They will not condemn the building in your city. If you lose the walls, they won't condemn the building. But if they ever find 
a crack in the foundation. <laughs> that is why the devil is not interested in your wife. She's the wall. The devil is not interested in Eve. She ain't holding up nothing. Oh, don't miss the night. It's going to be heavy for a few minutes. That's why you, listen to me, you are the most important part of God's building project. The male is the most important part of God's project. That's why you are on the top of the hit list of hell. Every project of hell is aimed at the male. Every one of them. Every ad has a naked woman. Why? They're after you. Pornography is after you. Dirty books is after the male. Corruption is after the male. Sweetheart is after the male. <laughs> if you can just destroy the foundation, the whole house is condemned. Isn't it amazing that when Eve saw the fruit, nothing happened. The Bible says she picked it, nothing happened. She bit it, nothing happened. She chewed it, nothing happened. She swallowed it, nothing happened. She digested it, nothing happened. It said, but then she took it to the foundation. Because she was not the, the heart of the building. The Bible says he took the fruit. Read my lips. And he ate it. The next word says, and suddenly. By one man, sin entered. By one man. That's why this for men only conference is a conference that is more important than a thousand, hundred thousand, ten thousand women. Because no matter how the women get healed, if the wall comes back and there's no foundation, all you got is a wall that can't stand up. Write this down. The world is filled with males with very few men. And the world is filled with many men, but very, even less fathers. We're suffering from a father problem. I did some research for you. I thought you'd be happy to see this. It'll be helpful to you. Uh, this was a statement that was written in Time Magazine on Father's Day. Three consecutive Father's Days, Time Magazine had this quote. They said, dad is destiny. Say that with me. Dad is, that was taken from Time Magazine. And they are correct. Matter of fact, here's a quote from this article. They said, more than any other factor, a biological father's presence in the family will determine a child's success or happiness. Time Magazine. Look at the next quote here. They said, 40% of all kids in the West now live without their biological father. Up 17.5% since 1960. Another quote from the magazine. They says, more than half of today's children will spend at least part of their childhood without a father. Another quote that's depressing. They say, fatherlessness is the most destructive trend of our generation. This is from a secular magazine. Another quote I thought was amazing. They said, the abuse of, the absence rather, of fathers is linked to the most social nightmares. Boys with guns to girls with babies. They say it's the fathers being absent that causes the problem. This is from sociologists, behavioral scientists, and psychologists research. Another quote is an amazing one, this one. They said 49% of all families with children headed by single mothers 
live below the poverty line. 49% compared with 8% of those with two parents. In other words, fatherlessness is the cause of poverty. Another quote, research. Studies show that only 41% of state prisons inmates grew up with both their parents and that a missing father is a better indicator and a predictor of criminal activity than race and poverty. In other words, people are in prison not because of poverty or race, but an absence of a father. Research in your own country. Oh, it gets interesting. Here's one I thought was interesting that threw me off. This one says, social scientists have made links between a father's absence and his child's likelihood of being a dropout, a jobless one, a drug addict, a suicide victim, mentally ill, or a target for sexual abuse. Fathers being absent. Another thought that shocked me. Research says only 51% of kids live with both biological parents today. That means every time you stand up in a church service, half of the church was brought up without, without fathers. In your youth group, half of the boys don't have fathers. The chances are, the woman that marries you marries a man who never had a proper father. Here's another quote I thought was interesting. 71% survey says it is very important to have a father living in the home. They surveyed secular people, U.S. News and World Report. They agree. The world is saying that we need fathers. Well, let's see what God says. The highest honor God ever placed on a male is the word father. Why? Because father is the title God gave himself. God never calls himself a mother. And God gave you his title. That's why we got to talk about it before we go home. Because if he gave you the title, you better find out what it is. You are so important, God gave you the title. Now, get ready. Sit up straight. Sit up straight. You're going to get heavy now. Watch this. Fatherhood is the ultimate work of the male. Why? Because fatherhood is the principal cause of sin. Let me put it another way. I'm moving fast for a reason. Sin is, the, is a fatherhood problem. How do we know that? Because sin is a result of a man declaring independence from his father. Therefore, man is suffering from a fatherless child syndrome. Can I put it to you? God saw fatherhood as the source and the solution to man's problems. I say both. He saw father as what? The source and the solution of the sin problem. How do I know that? Let's read what he says in the last prophecy in the Malachi before he closes the Old Testament. The last statement God made about humanity. He says he will turn the hearts of the fathers back to the children and the hearts of the children back to who? Their fathers or else I will come and curse the land. Whenever a country is under a curse it's because the men are out of position. Hey boys, re reposition yourself. Tell your neighbor, go back under the family. Oh, that's deep. Tell your neighbor, go back under your wife. Stay with me, I'm going to explain in a minute. My wife is secure because I am under her. <laughs> he said the solution that the Messiah will bring is that he will turn the hearts of the father back to the children and the children back to the father new testament 400 years later we read this very beautiful statement malachi 4 verse 6 says i will send you the prophet elijah before that great and dreadful day he will turn the hearts of the fathers back to the children children back to the father and then in luke is fulfilled and matthew and john is fulfilled and here's what it says about jesus christ do not hold on to me he says i have yet to return to my father and go instead and tell my brothers to meet me, he says, but I am returning to my father. And now he is your father again. All right, let's write now. What's the word father mean? Let's go home. Everybody say father. The word father is from the Hebrew word Abba. I'm talking about you right now. Watch this. Write this down. Abba. Everybody say Abba. The word Abba 
is the Greek word pater, P-A-T-E-R, in the New Testament, Old Testament Abba, New Testament pater, and they both mean the same thing. Matter of fact, the word in the Hebrew and the Greek means source. Write that down quick. It means source. Abba, source. Secondly, it means sustainer. Every man, write this down, please. The word Abba means what? Source and sustainer. It also means nourisher. Abba, nourisher. The word Abba also means supporter. In other words, you source something and then you support it. Abba. <laughs> the word Abba means foundation. This gets heavy. Oh. Now, you got to follow me. This next five minutes are very critical. God was not always father. Listen to me. To be a father, you have to become the source of something. That means something had to come out of you, and then you sustain it. So before anything was, God is. So everything that is used to be inside of God. <laughs> Hang on, Ashley. So if you met God before anything was, and he was standing on nothing by the corner of nowhere, and you shook his hands, you would be shaking hands with everything. But you wouldn't have known it because everything was inside of him. That means God, Jehovah, was pregnant with the universe before anything became. <laughs> then God decided let us create and out of God came 500 million galaxies they've counted so far and they're still counting a galaxy is a multiplicity of solar systems a solar system is a multiplicity of planets that means there are trillions and trillions of stars and planets and they are all out there and we still can't measure the length of the universe and all of that was inside of God inside of God are you with me follow me now listen to me so when God released everything he became the source of creation now whatever you release you have to automatically sustain So the Bible says he is the father of creation and he upholds all things by the power of his word. He's a true father. A father doesn't just produce, he sustains. I'm going to say it again. A father doesn't just produce, he sustains. No, you didn't hear what I said. A father doesn't just produce, he sustains. So let's go to work. Fatherhood means the source, sustainer, nourisher, and supporter, and the foundation of that which comes out of it. <sighs> Brother Kendall, can you come here a minute, please, quick? Stand right here. Face us. I want to show you something. Please don't miss this. I have a, a bottle of water here I want to show you how this works you will never forget this 
hold this now this is a bottle of water I'm going to pour this out into this glass so the act of pouring myself out automatically made me a father whatever is in this bottle is in this glass <laughs> so in the Hebrew language this would be called Abba <laughs> hallelujah so this is called the source this is called the resource you can't have a resource without a source so you are God's resource he is your source whatever is in the source is automatically in the resource uh, so when they say taste and see they don't need to go to heaven to taste him just run into you That Jehovah's Witnesses have a problem with you Christian people they say Jesus cannot be God because he calls God father which means he must be less than God they never been to my seminar What Christ was saying was this. He was saying, look. Jehovah is my source. So when they asked Jesus, show us the bottle. He said, what are you talking about? He that has seen the glass. Oh, come on, make some noise. You understood what I just said. I say hallelujah. hallelujah tell your neighbor you ain't got to go to heaven to see my father watch me from now on I'm gonna show you the nature of my daddy I got my heavenly genetics I am just like my father me and my father are come on clap your hands and shout somebody oh sit down look at this verse Look at this verse, very interesting verse. Uh, the word father means source and what? Sustainer. It means foundation and supporter. When God called the male father, you're telling the male, you are the source of something. Now watch this. Watch this. <laughs> oh, we're gonna go home dancing. Jesus said in John 8 verse 19, you do not know me, nor my father father what is father source if you knew the glass you would know the bottle <laughs> watch him now John 10 read I and the bottle I want because I came from I came from I came from I came from my father he says look at verse 9 of chapter 14 read and Jesus answered don't you know me Philip even after the glass of being on earth for so long he that have seen me have seen my source the shoe on your feet is still the cow it came from calling it a different name doesn't change it 
If someone call you stupid, you are still like your father. If someone call you ugly, you are still like your father. If you tell your shoe, I think you are crazy, it is still the cow. Oh, you miss me. Opinions do not change composition. Listen to me carefully then. And here comes the bottom line. The male is designed by God to be the father of the human family. Now listen to me. When God created the male, the foundation, please hear me. He gave the male all the instructions. He never gave any instruction to the female. Shh, listen to me. He took the male and put him in the garden of Eden and began to instruct him. <laughs> then God created a female afterwards. So the male was created first. And God decided, I'm going to do with the male what I did with myself. You get it, Bishop? I'm not going back to the soil to get the woman. Oh, you're going to get blessed in a minute. I'm going to make him what I am. So he put the guy to sleep, went inside the guy, went inside the male and pulled out another read my lips male Shh, listen male and he built another one except he made a few adjustments while he was building and he created a womb in this model to carry the fetus and gave it paps to sustain the fetus so he took the male and built the capacity for the fetus in the male and so he called it the fetus male fee male a female is a male that can carry the fetus so <laughs> He ran inside the man, took out another man, built the man, made a few adjustments, and put a womb. He called him the man with the womb. So you got the wombed man. You call him woman. <laughs> so if you ain't sure you are a man, don't break your wrist and wear ponytail and earrings and walk funny. Check and see if you got a womb. If you ain't got a womb, you're a brother. Hallelujah! I don't care what kind of surgery they do. They cannot put a womb in you. You can wear dress, put on wigs, make your breasts with hormones, but you ain't got no womb. You are a brother. You are a brother. Clap your hands on the real man. Hallelujah. When Adam saw her, Adam says, this is flesh just like my flesh and the bone structure just like mine and then he looked down he said oops she has a womb i will call her wombed man no psychology could create a womb no vote could create a womb no 70 bishops can lay hands on you and create a womb. 
no legislation in, in Washington could create a womb. If you ain't got a womb, put your pants on and be a brother. <laughs> Clap loud if you're a real man. Men are builders, say it. Men are builders. We are builders. Now watch this. God went inside the man, pulled out a womb man. This is important now. He didn't go to his feet, didn't go to his hip, didn't go to his back, didn't go to his head. He went to his heart. The word in Hebrew is not rib. It just says peace. Part. He took a part. Why? Because every cell in your body, please sit down. I got 10 more minutes. Every cell in your body is, listen to me, look at me, don't miss this. Very important, listen. Every cell in your body, scientifically proven, has in it a replica you. The DNA coding in every cell in your body codes for a duplicate you. The problem is we cannot split the code. Cloning is when you take the cell and you split the code and you cause the cell to multiply and produce an exact duplicate. So God is the first one to clone. He took a piece out of Adam, built a woman. This is important now. And the woman, therefore, is in this position. She's from the man's chest. So she's always on the top of the man. Why is this important? The children come out of the woman, so they are always in the front of the woman. You see, he's on the bottom. When life attacks the kids and hits the woman, and she falls. Oh, you didn't get what I said. Let me try one more time. When life hits the kids, hits the woman, and she falls. There's a man who was in Dallas, Texas at the men's conference who was there to catch her and say, woman, I'm your foundation, baby. I'm the one who holds the building up. I don't care what the devil does. I'm going to hold my family up. Clap your hands and scream, somebody. So from now on, don't you ever say again, behind every good man is a good woman. That's not kingdom. You should now say, in the front of every good man is a better woman. You are holding her up. All the real men, clap your hands and give God praise. You got to hold your family up. <laughs> Sit down quick, I got two more minutes. Everybody say foundation, foundation, foundation. <laughs> Listen to me. Man was the source of woman. The function of the male is to father the woman. Write this down, please. The function of the male is to father the woman. Put the notes up, please. I want you to get this, please. It's very important. A woman is not looking for a lover. She's not looking for a sex champion. She's looking for a father. <laughs> this is a shift now. This is kingdom stuff I'm talking about here. So the function of the male, say it. The function of the male is to do what? Father the female. What is father? Source. Listen, look at me. No woman on this planet, I don't care what she sells you, no woman on this planet wants to have to go to work. Let me say it slowly. No woman on this planet, none, I dare them to talk to me. I've been to 87 countries and every woman is the same. They don't want to have to go to work. Why? 
they're not built to have to support nothing. <laughs> they came to help. <laughs> and so the devil's strategy is to move the man and now the woman got to carry the weight and she's not built to carry the weight so he said I will return the hearts of the fathers back to the children if the foundations be restored, where will the righteous even be saved? How is the male, the father, the female? Here's the bottom line. The male is the source of seed. Women have no seed. You carry it in your loins right now, four generations, son. Every minute of every day, every male in here is carrying four generations. Right now. So whatever you do, it's being transferred upon your sperms. What you do in secret is never secret, it's generational. So your private escapades with the woman that you're not married to is not private. Generations are being impacted by that spirit of adultery. Some of you wonder why you are violent against women. Or why you are homosexually tendency. Or why you want to drink alcohol. Or why you want to take drugs. You wonder why am I like this? Why do I hate women? Why do I want to beat women? Check your father's father's father because the sins of the father never the mother never the mother the sins of the fathers God says are transferred to the first second third and fourth generation nothing that a male does is private it might be personal but never private so every time I'm tempted to sin I think about my unborn great-grandchildren. God doesn't just want to forgive you. He wants to forgive your righteous seed. You are the source of seed. You are the nourisher of fruit that comes from your seed. You are the source of the female that came out of you. The male is designed to protect the fruit that comes out of them. Therefore, the male determines the quality of the fruit and the tree. Therefore, the male maintains his offspring. Therefore, the male is the source of life. Listen to me, man, and I beg you. You are the key to the whole building. This theme was not given to you haphazardly, Bishop. If we're going to build the communities back in our countries. We got to study what Paul said. Paul said, I want you to realize that the head of every man is Christ. And the head of woman is man. And the head of Christ is God. Every man who prays with his head covered dishonors his head. Verse 8, the man did not come from the woman, but the woman came from the man. Abba. Abba. Now, now I feel an anointing coming on me. Listen. Listen. Therefore, the woman, all the women that you have in your life, you are supposed to father them. Listen, shh, listen. You are your wife's father. You ever wondered why? All the way back in Abraham time, even today, when you get married, 
you stand at the altar she's coming down the aisle with her father so there are two fathers in the house one waiting and one bringing follow me now the father who bringing he gonna soon release her to another father so the Bible says watch this the Bible says a man <laughs> leaves his father but it never says a woman leaves a woman never leaves read the Bible for this cause should a man leave his father mother but the woman never leaves her father why because she just changes fathers he turns her over to you and says pick up where I left off son keep on fathering my daughter pick up where I left off son you are the father of your wife and that's why it's built into you to automatically call your wife baby Oh, come on, brothers. Be honest now. Clap your hands. Because she is your baby. And that's why it is natural for your wife to finally call you daddy. Come on, scream if you got the revelation. Woo! Hallelujah. Everybody say, Abba. Tell your neighbor, you are Abba. Tell your neighbor, carry the load. Carry the load. Carry the load. Go home and carry the load. You are built for it. Woo! One last point I want to make. And I want to sit down. Sit down quick. Are you getting blessed tonight? Everybody say, my baby is at home. I'm going home to father her. Clap your hands, all you great albums. Fathers, fathers, do not abuse their children. They protect their children. Fathers provide covering and food and clothes and support and counsel and advice. So I saw this in the Bible. This is going to bless you. Genesis 2. I want to close with this. Very important. Write this down. God is now talking to the male. He said, he said, look, the Lord God took the male. This is very important. The books are there. Please get them all. Because there's so much I want to tell you. A man must read. Please be a reader. Shut TV off and read, okay? Look at me. God took the male and put him in the Garden of Eden, the Bible says. God didn't allow Adam to find Eden. He put him in Eden. Listen to me. This is so important. I did research on the word Eden for 12 years. I wrote a book on it. I discovered the word Eden is made up of five strokes in Hebrew. Look at me, five strokes. One stroke says spot. Another stroke says moment. Another stroke says open door. Another stroke means access. And the final stroke means presence. It's interesting. The word Eden is five strokes in Hebrew. It means moment, spot, presence, open door, access. Eden, therefore, is impossible to translate into English. That's why the word Eden is written Eden, the Hebrew word is written Eden in English. Because the word Eden literally means the spot for the moment where the presence of God is open door access to heaven. Look at me again. What is Eden? A spot on the earth for the moment where the presence of God is an open door to heaven it says God took the man and put him in the spot so the first place God put the male is in his presence so the first thing a male needs is not 
the presence of a woman. He needs the presence of God. The second thing God says, work it and cultivate and guard the garden. And then the Lord commanded the man, don't touch the tree. So here's the bottom line. Write this down. The five purposes of the male. First, number one, Eden. To be a kingdom man, you must be in the presence of God 24 hours a day. Number two, work. God gave man work before he gave him woman. That means you need a job before you get a wife. Number three, God told a man to cultivate. To cultivate means to bring the best out of something. To, bring, to make it fruitful. Therefore, God will never give a male a finished product. Oh, it's going to get heavy now. You were designed to be a cultivator. So God will not give you anything you don't have to cultivate. So God never gave Adam a chair or a table. He hid them in the trees. God never gave Adam a pair of shoes. He hid it in the cow. Okay, here's the good part. God will never give a male a finished woman. This is very important now. The woman that you are looking for, the one in your head, does not exist. That's why you can't find the perfect woman. She only exists in your mind. God will only give you the raw material. He said, I want you to cultivate her and make her into the woman in your mind. So your job is to develop and to refine and to train and to educate and to improve the woman in your life. That means the longer a woman stays with you, the better she should become. If you are ashamed of your wife, you should be ashamed of yours. Oh, come on, men, go with me now. Getting ready to go home now. Therefore, you must be just like your hero, Jesus. The Bible says he has a woman. Her name is Ecclesia. He says, you love your wife like I love my wife. How? I wash her. I cleanse her. I remove every spot, every wrinkle, every blemish, every stain. And then I present her to myself. And I say, look at what I did. That's mine. That's my thing. He says, you're supposed to feel proud of your wife. You're supposed to make her what she's wanted to become, become the woman she was born to be. Present your wife to yourself. When I first married my wife, she was afraid to talk to the dark. Today she speaks all over the world by herself. Why? Every woman is a man's project. I'm going to say it again. Your wife is your divine project. If she's too fat, don't tell her she's fat. You wake her up at 6 o'clock. Come, baby, let's go. I got to cultivate you. Let us go jogging. If she don't look right, don't dress right, don't criticize her. You take her to the best boutique in town and buy her the best clothes and say, come on, baby, look at my stuff. Cultivate. If you are not proud of your wife, you should be ashamed of yourself. I know it's quiet now. I'm getting ready to go. Tell your neighbor, cultivate your woman. Tell your neighbor, cultivate your woman. 
your children are supposed to be produced better and better because they are your children you cultivate last two he says protect the garden males are protectors that's why God gave you larger bone structures and mass muscle why you were born to be a protector when a man takes his muscle and hit the very thing he should be protecting that man is a beast your strength was not given to you to destroy a woman but to protect a woman so don't you ever touch that woman again I'm talking to you sitting in the back there don't you go home and apologize and tell your wife in Dallas this week the kingdom set me free forgive me baby I will never harm you again you are my delicate protection What a shame that a powerful man with all of his strength at 2 o'clock in the morning would creep into his baby's room and climb on the top of his six-year-old daughter and use his strength to pin her down. This is abomination. Stop it, brother. Stop it. Your strength was given to you to protect your wife and your daughter. Oh God, help me. And the last one, he said, Adam, I give you my command. Teach the woman. God never told Eve about the tree. He only told the man. Your job is to teach your family the command of God. The problem is, the devil has reversed it. Your wife knows more word than you. And you are wired to be the teacher. That's why you hate when she tries to teach you. So from this day forward, go to that lobby Get your credit card, buy every TDJ's books out there, every Brother Watley's book, buy every book. Why? You gotta catch up now. Spend 207 as your education year to become a man of education, to teach your family the word of God. Clap your hands and give him praise. You will be a better man. Stand up on your feet if you're a real man and shout to the king. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Thank you once again for listening to this message as we hope that it has been a blessing to you. Our goal is to show you new paths and opportunities so that you can discover your purpose. It is your love, support, and partnership that makes Monroe Global possible. Please visit us online at www.monroeglobal.com for more product, partnership, or to join us at one of our live events around the world.